I mean, you could, I can imagine a group of people who refuse to call Appletonis martinis. I can imagine a group of people who do, do call them martinis, and they're basically, whether you live in New Jersey or whether you live in <laughs> I'm abusing New Jersey, but I am from Philadelphia, so I can't really do that. That's very similar to New Jersey. So, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry if I'm thinking of These are verbal questions. Some people think that a lot of these metaphysical questions are, in some sense, also merely verbal or merely about how to talk. So, to get you onto what they're thinking about, imagine that you talk, you, imagine. Um, with a newborn child, teaching that child how to speak the language of temporal parts. So whenever the child sees a person who's first sitting down and later standing up, you teach him to say, oh, there are two temporal parts there. There's first a temporal part that's sitting down, later a temporal part that's standing up, and the person is made up of those two temporal parts. <laughs> and similarly, whenever they see some change, what you teach him to say, I mean, you, you can teach him to say the regular thing too, say, oh, that person just cut their hair. First they had short hair, they had long hair. Uh, oops, uh, <laughs> First they had long hair, they had short hair. But they also will say, and by the way, with that, um, that, that also means that there are these two different temporal parts, one with long hair, one with short hair. So, and it's clear that there would be, that would be a consistent way to talk. But you could also teach the child to teach a different way. You could teach the child to say um, that um, there's, um, there are no such things as temporal parts. So you teach the child to stick with the ordinary description. Say, no, there was just one entity there. The person, person first had long hair, later had short hair, but there are no additional entities temporal parts. It seems like there are two completely consistent ways of speaking about the question of whether they're temporal parts. And then these people who, who think that metaphysics is not about the real world will say, really the only issue is which of these is the way that we talk, or which of these is more convenient for this or that purpose, or makes things more vivid. But it's just a question about how to talk. It's not a question about the real world. Just like, intuitively, there's no real question about the real world at stake when we fight about whether Appletinis are martinis, or whether Robinson Crusoe is a bachelor. Um, different, equally good ways to talk. So, and, and, and people take these, at, these, um, these attitudes for lots of different um, metaphysical debates. So they say, we could talk as if absences are causes, or we could refuse to call those causes, and we could only call causes more concrete events that we could locate in space and time. And what really turns on them? Just different ways to talk. So that's the challenge. The challenge presented by people who think that metaphysics quite generally is not about the real world is to show how, well, the, ch the challenge is to figure out whether these metaphysical questions are more like questions like about martinis, about the nature of martinis, which are just about how to talk, or are they more like questions of physics that are clearly about the real world? I mean, there, if we say, well, do electrons repel one another or not, that's not just about how to talk. So which, is, which are these metaphysical questions more like? So to get at that, I want to now make a digression and talk about some issues in the philosophy of space and time. Okay. So, suppose you ask me, which way is up? <laughs> suppose I'm talking on the phone, arguing with somebody on the other side of the globe who's pointing in that direction and saying, that's up. <laughs> uh, that is not a dispute about the real world. Even though I say that's up, and the other person says a different direction is up. And the reason it's not a dispute about the real world is that there is no one single true up. Up just means away from the center of the Earth or the, near, the center of mass of the nearest mass of body or something like that. Away from the center of the Earth from where you are. Similarly, there's no one true here. If I say, I'm here, and you're over there, and you say, no, this is here. Well, here just means where you are. Up just means away from the center of the Earth where you are. Nobody would say, well, wait a second, I know that that's up for you, and that's up for them, but what's really up? What's true up? There's no such thing as true up. Okay, so there's one example. Next example from the philosophy of space and time. So, imagine that there's this part of the universe, the distant galaxy, where everything goes in reverse. 
So imagine, in fact, that there is an exact duplicate of the planet Earth there, except everything happened in reverse there. So there's this guy, Det, who well, I'm going to call him Det, uh, Ted spelled backwards, who experiences life in reverse, at least from my point of view, I see, if I looked at a telescope, I would see Det's death after, uh, Det's death birth after Det's death, because everything there happens in reverse. Of course, Dad would look at me and say the same thing, except for us would sound in a way that I couldn't have done. But, uh, so, so everything's happening in reverse order. So here's the question. So I say that Dad's birth is after his death. Dad says that his death is after his birth. So we have an apparent disagreement about what's before or after what. The question is, is that a real dispute. Some people think, no. Some people think that the direction of time what is after what? what? Which direction of time is future and which is past? They don't believe in a true future, true direction of time. What they think is, all it means to be the future of direction of time is to be the direction of increasing entropy. So entropy is this concept from physics and it roughly means disorder. So if we let a vial of red gas, we open a vial of red gas over here, it could all just stay in the vial, but most likely it's going to dissipate and spread around. And as it spreads around, that's increasing entropy. That some philosophers of physics and physicists think that what the forward direction of time is, is the direction of time in which entropy increases. They reduce the direction of time to the direction of increased entropy. And in a weird example of the example of my thought experiment, in which, in essentially what's going on is we've got a local pocket in which entropy increases in the opposite direction from what it increases over here. Over this other planet, the planet where everything's going to backwards, entropy increases in the direction in which entropy around here decreases. Given if, the, if all the direction of time is, is the, the, the future direction of time is, is the direction of increase of entropy then we can't say that either I or debt is correct. What we should say is, well, future, the future direction of time around here is the direction in which entropy, entropy is increasing around here. And the future direction of time around there is the direction in which entropy is increasing around there. And there's no one true future direction of time. Other people, though, think, no. That the direction of time is very different from directions in space. Directions in space. The reason we don't think there's a true up is we think that space is isotropic. Every direction of space is just as good as every other. But just as we don't think that there's any true point zero zero zero, you know, if you put a coordinate system, you call that point zero zero zero. It's not like that point was uniquely deserving to be zero zero zero. You could call some other point zero zero. Similarly, every direction is as good as every other. You can move the coordinate system any way you want. But the people who think there's a true direction of time think. You can't take a coordinate system where this is pointing in the future direction of time and just as good reverse it, because that would be getting something wrong. You've got, the, you're representing time is increasing in this direction, but time is really increasing in that direction. So some people believe in a true direction of time. And so they would say, the dispute between me and debt is a real dispute. Two more examples from classical space of time. So, he, and that, here's another kind of strange thought experiment. Um, imagine that I am having a dispute with my friend, and I think that I am twice as massive as I used to be. And my friend is like, what are you talking about? And I say, yeah, I think I, I now am twice as massive as I was just a second ago. And they go, wait a second, nothing looks different. And I say, yeah, but the re and so they put me on a scale, and the scale reacts in exactly the same way. And I say, well, yeah, but the... Um, um, uh, the, the reason that is the case is actually everything in the whole universe just doubled in size. And so not only, it wasn't just that I increased in mass, but I also increased in size, and also everything else did, including all the measuring apparatus. And so everything is behaving with respect to everything else exactly as it did before. But still, in absolute terms, everything is now twice as large as it used to be, twice as massive as it used to be as well. Okay? And some people would say, well, that's ridiculous. Some people would say, it makes no sense to say that everything just doubled in size because all sizes are relative. They would say there is no such thing as being truly 
one foot apart. What, make, what, what there is is these objects are exactly as far apart as those objects. Relative sizes are, that, that's, that's what the uh, spatial facts uh, amount to, facts of relative size. These things are as far apart as those things. This object is the same shape as that object. But it makes no sense to say that objects, all objects double, double in size. Because sizes are always comparative. And if every object doubled in size, we wouldn't have any object to make a comparison. So the dispute there is, so if there is such a thing as true absolute size, true being one foot apart, then we could, we could say, yeah, it makes sense to say that everything is doubled in size, because things that used to be one foot apart are now two feet apart. But if there is no such thing as true absolute size, if all there is is true relative size, then that wouldn't make any sense. Last example. I think most philosophers of physics, actually I actually don't know this, but I think most philosophers of physics would agree that there is no such thing as true absolute size. Sizes are relative. However, they would agree that there is such a thing as true relative size. That is, most philosophers of physics think that there is a real question, it's not a merely verbal question, as to whether these two things are as far apart as those two things. Forget about spatial and temporal distances, and, and uh, that, that's, not, that's not a relevant issue here if you're worried about some things from relativity. If they believe in comparisons of relative size. But there are some philosophers of physics, a minority, who think that even comparisons of relative size are not in the real world. So I'll give you a final uh, example of what these people think. So according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, space, actually space-time, but let's not worry about that, space is curved. According to the standard views of real, most realist philosophers of physics anyways, Einstein genuinely disagreed with Newton. Newton thought that space was flat. Einstein thought that space is curved. That's a genuine disagreement about the world, about the nature of space. But some philosophers of physics say, no. You could describe the world in Einstein's way, or you could describe the world in Newton's way. That's kind of like describing the world calling Appletini's martinis, or describing the world not calling them martinis. Two different, equally good ways to talk. And the way it works according to these philosophers is this. If you do some experiments that seem to suggest that space is curved, you could describe that by saying, yes, space is curved. But you could also describe that by saying space is flat, but there are these universal forces that distort objects, <coughs> so make it look like space is curved. So you could describe the world that flat, no universal forces, or describe the world in terms of cur uh, sorry, curved and no universal forces, or flat and universal forces, and those are just equally good ways to talk. That's a position of the philosophy of space and time. Whereas, uh, as I was saying, most realist philosophers in physics anyway think that that's not right because there are these true relative distances. So that's the end of that digression. Now I just want to end my talk by applying that to the question of whether metaphysical questions are about the world. So what we've learned from this digression into the philosophy of space and time is that the question, is this about the real world, is not confined to metaphysics. It arises all over, in lots of different areas. I mean, I would just describe some even within physics. Uh, but there are, we, can, we find these questions about whether a certain question is about the real world or whether it's not. We find them throughout inquiry. We face them all the time. So what about that? Well, I want to make two points about it. And this is the very end of, of the handout. My first point is that whether a question is about the real world depends on the nature of the real world. So in the case of time, there was a controversy. It was not obvious whether the dispute between me and death as to whether his birth is before or after his death. The, the question of whether that is a question about the real world depended on whether there is such a thing as true Time, true forwards and backwards in time. It depends on the nature of time. Because space doesn't have an, an intrinsic direction. Every direction is just as, as good as any other to call up. Um, just depends on where you are, where you're located. The question is, is time like that? Or does time have a built-in direction? Is, is there a true forwards in time? 